Welcome to the School Leaders Podcast. My name is Dr. Gastrit Harrigan, the podcast for current and emerging school leaders, those who support and supervise them. You will hear from passionate educational leaders who are transforming their schools, communities, and creating positive outcomes for students. I will also share my personal reflections and tips from over 15 years as a school leader. Together, we will talk about how to level up our schools and leadership practices. Hello, and welcome to the School Leaders Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Gastrit Harrigan. In today's podcast, I want to share some of the strategies you can use to reinvent and rebuild the culture of your school. Uh, My hope is that you will take one or two tips to embed, to apply to your school or department to improve its culture. How would you define your school or department culture? Think and reflect on that. How would you define your school or department culture? How is your school culture? How is your department culture? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it toxic? Even if it's a good and positive uh, culture, I think you still can benefit from this uh, podcast and take one, maybe two things to make it even better. What are some of the steps and actions you can take to really improve your culture? So stay tuned. I will share some of the lessons learned crafting and building my school culture. I will be remiss if I didn't take some time and share with you my first years as a principal and really the culture that I inherited. By the time I was named a new principal, I was tagging the local newspaper and in that article, they were sharing some of the bullying complaints, some of the challenges, some of the issues that uh, was facing the school. And and by the time I made it to the board and I was approved, I find out that within five months, two veteran principals were forced to retire. And the third one that was the current principal filling in was just <laughs> waiting for me to be approved so that I could take over. And on the uh, on my first day on the job, I walked in within a few hours. I found out that I had a lot of union grievances, state and local investigation waiting for me to address. There were a lot of inner fightings. In fact, teachers and staff were passing each other in the hallway. They were not talking to each other. They were not greeting each other. So there were a lot of problems. So those were some of the things waiting for me. I also got to find out after I got my keys on the first day, uh, one of my APs came in and says, hey, I'm retiring effective today. Today's my last day and I am retiring. And within two months, my second and last AP came in and says, I'm retiring also. So I am a new principal two months in. I have no assistant principal and I have on my desk state, local investigations, union grievances waiting for me to address a lot of inner fighting, staff not talking to each other, no collaboration, no discussions, no dialogues are taking place at the school. To where we are today, it's a great place to work. Student achievement is at its highest. We have an effective um, state rating as a grade, and we move from about 10% graduation to over 89% in our graduation rate. And we also have over $600,000 in grants, several partnership to where students are completing paid internship and on the job training at our local city government and also at local businesses that we have partnered with. And by the way, we are also Florida's PBIS model school, positive behavior intervention and support model a school for the state of Florida. So in today's podcast, I will share some of the strategies, some of the ideas uh, to transform your school, to transform your department to, or if it's a great 
culture already, how can you maybe apply one or two tips to make it even better? Before we get going, what is culture? According to Groover and Whitaker, culture is essentially a social indoctrination of unwritten rules that people learn as they try to fit in in a particular group. Let me read that again for you. Culture is essentially a social indoctrination of unwritten rules that people learn as they try to fit in into a particular group. In fact, Whitaker went on to say that if you don't address the culture of your school, your culture is going to eat, turn negative every staff member that you hire. Now, before we dive in, there are two important facts that you need to know about culture. The two important facts that I think are very important that you need to know about culture. Number one, culture trump strategy. Culture trump strategy. In fact, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Culture of your school trump any strategies you're going to implement, you're going to uh, have. Number two facts about culture is that to a large degree, healthy cultures are the result of effective leadership and management. To a large degree, healthy cultures are the result of effective leadership and management. So that means that there is room for you as a, as a leader of your school, as a principal, as the assistant principal, or as a emerging leader, or whether you're a department chair, whether you are a team leader, you can have an impact on the culture of your school, the culture of your department. Reinvent and rebuild the culture of your school. The first way I believe that is important to, to reinvent and to rebuild the culture of your school is that you need to understand relationship matters. In fact, Robin says that building relational trust is critical to moving a school forward and accomplishing the instructional agenda. So it's important to foster healthy relationships with students, with parents, and with stakeholders. In fact, I don't know if you ever hear this. In real estate, they usually say it is all about location, location, location. So in leadership, it really is all about relationship, relationship, relationship. It's really, truly all about building relationship, really taking time to know your staff, be a relationship with your teachers, with your staff, the custodian, the clerical. It's important to take time to build relationship with students, build relationship with parents, build relationship with all stakeholders. Part of that building relationship is that, you know, you have to understand you have to be highly visible in the school. So in the morning during drop-off, you should be in the drop-off line somewhere or as students enter the school, you know, greeting them, meeting them, giving them that, meeting parents and, and talking to parents, being visible during transitions. Even during lunchtime, uh, you don't have to stay in the cafeteria, but passing by to just greet students and learn students and, and really be visible in the school. Obviously, during dismissal, you want to be one of the first, last faces that kids see as they leave for the day and parents sees as they pick up their child for the day. Part of building relationships is learning to value your staff, your teacher's voice, and valuing uh, what they say and bring to the table and having an open door policy where people can come talk to you, drop by and discuss and really further strengthen that relationship. Part of building relationship is is really, especially if you have older kids, is really valuing student voice. Uh, Michael Fullen said that in his book, Leading in the Culture of Change, he makes it clear that leaders must be consummate relationship builders with diverse people in groups especially with people different than themselves. Let me say that again. Leaders must be con- consummate relationship builders with diverse people in groups, especially with people different than themselves. As a principal, as a leader, as an emerging leader, as an assistant principal, you must work to be a relationship builder. As a department chair or team leader, it's very important that you are a relationship builder builder. If you are going to transform the culture of your school, of your department, of that group, you got to learn to build relationship. How did I build relationship? As I indicated earlier, I took time and met with every single staff. Yes, 
every single staff. I met with the custodial team. I met with the clerical team. I met with every support staff, every teacher. I met with every single one of my staff in that building. Got to know them, got to know about their families, their kids, really get to find out what was really important to them. What are those things? Yes, we got to discuss some of the issues, problem happening at the school, but really, it was really for me to get to know them as a person, get to know them as a staff member, get to know them, their family, what is it that was important to them, and and obviously learn and glean from some of the challenges, whatever they wanted to share. But the whole idea was for me to really get to know them. I also had what I call at the time, chew and chat. It simply meant that I would cater lunch or breakfast uh, for the staff. I paid for it out of my pocket and I would invite them to come break bread with me, to come eat. And really I had two simple rules. Um, number one, you had to eat. Um, even if you drink something, you had to drink something or coffee or depending if it was a breakfast or lunch, you had to eat. And number two, that during that time, I really didn't want to talk about the kid. I really didn't want to talk about the issues that are happening in the school or in your classroom. That time was for me to get to know you. That time was already for me to get to know how your family doing, how your kids are doing, how I can support you as a leader. Building relationship is invaluable. You must take time to build relationship. In fact, as a principal, as a school leader, you must be a relationship builder. Another thing I would like to share, I love this quote, is, is that relationship are perhaps the most important part of establishing a school culture that is perceived as in breed caring. Let me read that quote again for you. Relationship are perhaps the most important part of establishing a school culture that is perceived as in breed caring caring. So as you build relationship, how your staff is going, how you're going to really work at transforming that school is really the time you're taking in to build those relationships because that breeds caring. That is perceived as, you know, you care for them. You want to get to know them. During those times, you really want to take time to listen more than you speak. Really, you should work at really listening to them, getting to know them. You do the less talking and they do more talking and you do more listening than talking and really getting to know them. Uh, so that way you, you, you are building that relationship. You must understand that time spent investing in the culture of the school is an investment in the daily life of the people in the school. I love that quote from um, Murkowski, is that the time spent in investing in the culture of the school is in an investment in the daily lives of the people in the school. You must take time and invest in the people of the school. And that is how you are going to transform your culture. By taking time to invest in the culture of the school is an investment in the daily life of the people in the school. So b relationship is critical getting to know your people, getting to know your staff, getting to know your teachers become very invaluable. Uh, there are three ways you could build trusting relationship with kids because it's also important that you build relationship. If you're going to transform that school culture, uh, you got to build relationship also with your students. There are three ways to build trusting relationship. And number one is to be visible, be visible, be visible. You need to be visible. Kids need to be able to see you. They need to see you in the morning, see when they're coming in, giving them dap, handshake, whatever, comfortable for them and for you. Be visible. Be visible in the cafeteria and in, in common areas. Be visible in the hallway. Be visible. Visit their classroom. I used to tell my teachers, whenever there is a presentation, there's a showcase, I want to be there to witness it, to, to tell the kid congratulations. If they're presenting to the class, I want to be there and see their presentation and really you know, support them and really value and let them know the great job they are doing. Be visible. The second thing is to take an interest. Take interest in kids. Find out what they like. I'm a secondary school, so sports, activities, club, whatever their interest is. For one of my kids, he was a YouTuber. In fact, he claims he was making money. So every time I see him, I would ask him, hey, how's the YouTube channel going? Did you make more money this week? Well, how much, how many more videos did you create to increase traffic to your channel? Got to know a child's parent. When I see them, hey, how's your dad doing? How's your mom doing? How's your sister doing? Take an interest into the students that you have. The third way to build relationship with students is to listen. Kids will tell you if you ask them, but you really need to Listen. So, uh, three ways to build uh, trust and relation with students. We said was number one to be visible, take interest, and to listen. 
Thank you for joining me today. Please consider subscribing to the podcast, leave a five-star rating and a comment, share this episode with a friend and on social media. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for leadership ideas and tips. Again, thank you for joining me today. Until next time.